Hello, everyone. I'm Sam Ekman of Gold Derby, and I am very excited to sit here with Tracy Bennett from the new play Hangman by Martin McDonough. And I think the last, uh, if I'm correct, the last stage production you were in, Tracy, was a revival of Mame uh, across the pond, which I don't think I don't think you could get further away <laughs> from Mame than Martin McDonough. So was was that a conscious choice uh, for some contrast there in your next project? Um, no, to be honest, I've always tried to fishtail because um, everybody knows I kind of trained to be a stunt girl in the day. And I got into uh, a TV by how, I don't know, but that was funding my stunt work, if you like. Mm -hmm. And then uh, they realized I was flying helicopters and stuff. And of course, in my naivete in the day, I didn't know about insurance and stuff like that. So they stopped me doing it. And I had to then make a decision, but it was done because I was under contract. And so ever since I've done that, it's almost like I still think I'm a stunt girl in my head or a chorus girl or something. So I've tried to vary um, because I was trained in musical theatre also uh, and the dramas uh, at college. So um, I've been lucky that it's worked out and I've had to be brave with that. You know, I've had to be really brave in going well, I'll just try a Molière and now I'll try uh, uh, She Stoops to Conquer and then I'll try Shakespeare and then I'll go into Guys and Dolls and then I, you know, I keep kind of swirling these little plates of variety, which, which has worked out for the better or the worse, really, sometimes. You know, you can do a play for like £100 a week and you've missed a major television for half a million. <laughs> <laughs> but... Um, and you just have to get on with it and learn and choose your choice. Uh, go down that olive, that branch of a tree and stick on it and never look back, I think. Yes, well... So it, it wasn't a conscious choice. I've always wanted to do Maine for about 15 years mm. now. You know, you get to that age bracket and you think, mm, OK, that's never been done. I really like quirky little things that have never been done. And, of course, in this climate, even in 1990... Um, 2019 you know the budgets aren't there for people to risk really so um i did it at the hope mill theater which is in manchester which i'm the patron of and there's um will and joe who own it and uh, they're fantastic and they've in six years they've won every award going and i thought maybe we'd do it there wow that's amazing. And this current branch you've gone down with Hangman, uh, it's been kind of a long journey to open this on Broadway, given the pandemic and you shut down and uh, Broadway shut down. And along the way, you have some new cast members, most notably David Threlfall joined, who you have a lot of material with. He plays your husband. So did it feel like you had to relearn the play in a way because that relationship is new? Yeah, very much. Um but I'm kind of used to that with doing other plays that I've done for a long time. And then the different cast comes in, different musicians come in. So uh, I was, I was not floored by that. Um, and I'm, for want of a better word, I suppose, a support featured role. Um, one would say the underdog. <laughs> Do you like an underdog? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> well, anyway, yeah. So, but I've known David since we were like eighteen. We used to work at the same TV studios, um, and then you know you go your own way and they go their own way. And so I was very happy that he was on board, um, and I'd forgotten most of the the technical stuff. People said to me the other day, some some people outside. Oh, your part's not as big as Judy. And I'm like, no, I flip between lead and featured, you know, and, and I've always done that, luckily, yeah. luckily. Uh, I don't have any snobbery about that at all. Um, and it's a different skill in both quests, very different skill. So as a featured part, I have never done anything more technical than this. I have to time every pint to the second. I have to do it on a word with the till. I have to clean on a certain type and finish on a certain type. And if those pints aren't poured, it doesn't so much matter at the end when it all gets a bit frazzled, but it's got to be timed to perfection. And that's what took my time up. 
Yeah, it's interesting because on the surface, it doesn't seem like it would be a play that has that amount of technical requirement. But when you watch it, the people in this bar, their behavior, they're there every day. So it becomes like watching the pieces of a clock move almost. Right. They're so timed. How, how long did it get? How long did it take you to get all that? In well, for me, place? I'm still I'm still nervous every <laughs> night because sometimes maybe somebody's knocked a pint over and that's your pint that you have to, and I'm like, where's the glass? And so you have to quickly find one, you know. Um, it, it, so rehearsals, I don't know, about four weeks with the tech and you just have to keep going over and over and over it again. And of course, if, if, if some timing goes wrong, it's almost like I have to learn everybody else's lines mm. to make my journey easier, such as it is not easy at all. It, it really is a technical nightmare, but brilliant because there's the challenge. It's not about some words sometimes. It's she's very um, reactions, you know, to Alice is uh, full of reactions in the second act, mm -hmm. but she still has to do it. And she still has to run the invoices and the smoking and put it down at a certain point. It, it took me, as I say, it's, if something goes tiny bit wrong now, like there was a cigarette packet in an ashtray the other day and I couldn't put my cigarettes out. So I just crunched it up and threw it on a table. But meanwhile, you're going this big speech, you know. <laughs> <laughs> We've only opened to uh, like last week, was it? Yeah, it's a lot of moving parts. You know, there. yeah. Yeah, and we have um, to kind of do the things in between as well. So it, that, it's like having a heart attack every night. Not as bad as that, sorry, but it, it, it's really hard. Well, you make it look flawless. It doesn't look like a heart <laughs> attack at all, thankfully. Um, the what I also love about Martin's scripts is that they they have this very um, there's a darkness to them amid all the comedy he does, and I think a lot of the darkest moments come courtesy of of Mooney, which is Alfie Allen's character, and you have one of the most in, intense moments with him where he really loses his temper. What is it like working with Alfie in those moments? Oh, he's just not only, I was going to say adorable, but that's the wrong word. He's fine. He's a fine craftsman, you know, and such a lovely bloke. I knew his father in the day I did a big series for the BBC with his father when he was a little boy. <laughs> and so that was like, hey, Alfie, you've grown up, you know. Um, but he's very applied, very committed. Um, and he's, he's got a millions of, of gamuts of emotions in him. And then he'll flip as the character, you know. And so he really does trigger fear in me, which is what you want. Um, and, and he's just fantastic to work with. He'll, he'll get on with it, you know. Yeah. Uh, and really quickly as well. <laughs> it's like now I'm feeling really old. <laughs> <laughs> and <laughs> it must also be nice to have uh, the playwright there versus, you know, if you did a classic like Mame in a revival, you don't usually have the, the writers around. What has been, what has it been like working with Martin and what's his input been like? Oh, massively. He, he you know, he cares a lot about the rhythm of his speech patterns and uh, the speed and finely tuned characterizations. You know, they, it, it, it can be seen as being heightened, but these characters are exactly like that and from that area. Mm -hmm. So I know that pub. You know, you go in up north, <clears throat> where I'm from originally, Manchester in the main, but you go off into these little hills and dales of the moors, you know, and these pubs are there. And um, they've known each other years, he, 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 I think he said he went to visit one of those villages and sat there, you know. Um, but he, he's just a wonderful writer and I love the dark also. Yeah. You know, maybe I've done fluffy things in the past because I want to feel what that's like and I've done pantomimes, but in each, you know, comedy is very serious. It, to me, it, it's not light. Uh, and the geniuses who do kind of pantomimes, uh, they do it off the cuff and it's as if they, they're they 
they're just doing it off the cuff and sometimes it is but it's all like Dean Martin used to pretend he was drunk you know mm. you can't do that and be drunk he never drank before a show but that was the thing and so we have to make it so real and he was on that in a second with the speed you can't say at instead of it you can't say that instead of but which you know certain playwrights are pedantic about and others aren't so it's almost like if you're a dancer, say, which I was, you mold yourself into that choreographer's style. And there's a style with this that you have to get into, whether it's ridiculous situation or a dark situation or a high comedy situation. It's black, very black yeah. comedy. Um, and so it was a joy to have him there. And, and so gently put too. Sorry, I'm going to blow my nose because <laughs> I'm sitting here. <laughs> Um, know, well, we've so. come in from the rain um you know <laughs> coming from the misty rain. sorry well one of the things i also wanted to ask you about is kind of in that vein of the variety of your career because you have plenty of credits over you know you have so much many great roles uh in the uk it's only because i'm old but, and cheap damn well <laughs> well but i i think most you know many new york audiences and broadway audiences will might have first seen you in end of the rainbow uh where you played judy garland fabulously and is there what's the difference to you between playing a real life figure like judy who everyone knows versus someone like alice where there's a bit more perhaps blank space to fill in sure um it, it depends on play i think you know, I mean, when I did Judy, I know Lord Delphont very well, and he's the nephew, Michael, Michael Grade. He's the nephew of Bernard Delphont, who booked Judy at the Palladium. And uh, he was saying that the hotel scenes were spot on because he had to run and get her on. He was actually there in that room. So I really pounced on him. But not so much concert. I mean, what do I know about being a legend? No clue. Never will. You have to imagine that bit and be the concert artist. But mainly I was dealing with the price of fame. Judy just happened to be, you know, it was a play in a different vein before. And we'd, we'd spotted, it was more about an Oedipal thing between, between this generic diva from America and her son. And I'd spotted something that it's actually not about that. It's about this diva dealing with her throat and the, she didn't want to do it anymore. And, and, and somebody said at the time, you know, I was singing like, I'll be seeing you in it. And they all kept saying there's a Judy thing, but there isn't. I mean, I'll never be Judy. I didn't want to be Judy. Nobody should be Judy. It, it was a study in the price of fame with any star of an ilk from the studio vein in the day you know with the drug scene and they were all at it Judy just carried on with it and Mickey Rooney didn't say and that's well documented that's not from me I mean I did all my research some people can't help it and and and, and you know that that's that's how it is but um the audiences either liked the play or didn't it was Marmite and I, I didn't write it you know I, I could just I just had to execute it. Um, and with Alice, again, I, I didn't write it. I know those women more because uh, I'm from that culture. I'll never be from a legend culture. <laughs> um, and so that's it in a nutshell, really. It's as basic as that. Um, I know that woman in Hangman Hangmen, because I'm not that, but I've seen an amalgamation of that. Uh, an indirect anger comes out of her to her daughter out of frustration. You don't feel that she loves her at first, but she's getting bullied by her husband and she's bored by him. But she's a woman of her era, which she had to kind of do what the man said. But a hybrid, furious, because if you own and run a pub you're really hard mm. you're not stupid you're not just saying like words like this and going oh okay there's a feisty element to it and indirect anger coming out at other people 
and she's sick of the celebrity that the hangmen bring to the pub, you know, her husband. Sure. And because he's bullying and being misogynist, which that was the era, happens now actually as well, um, there's a certain element of me kowtowing and then really being vulnerable. So it's, it's not massive, but it's a kind of arc. You don't understand why she's so angry at first, but then you kind of get why. Um, and then you realise the vulnerability of her because actually she really, really does love her daughter. Um, she's just being frustrated with her because she's 15 and moody, you know. <laughs> um, so that's my little journey. And uh, I have to be responsible for that, being a kind of feisty woman, but yet a loving mum at the same time, but yet a frustrated mum, you know. Yeah, there's lots of layers that come out uh, in his place. Um, especially for you. Uh, before I let you go, I do have to ask, you know, if we're thinking beyond and thinking about, you know, all the variety in your career, because you've had so many great musical roles in, in British theater. Uh, you, you did sing it in End of the Rainbow, but you haven't given us a musical, you know, a proper musical here in, in New York. Is there any bucket list roles you still have in terms of musicals? And can, oh. how can we? And how can we get you here to do them in, on Broadway? <laughs> there are lots, actually, uh, but not that much my age. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, you have to be real realistic and go. You can't play thirty-five anymore. And the voice is uh, bass. Um, that's why it suited me for Maine, really. You know, I've done the She Loves Me's. So I, I did Follies, um, and 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 you kind of grow into that powdered lady era so I, I i've been wanting to do seesaw for an age but but i'm kind of maybe on the edge of too old certainly people might think that there's a uh, woman of the year revival there's um of course everybody will run to get the rights now um applause you know that kind of uh broad that mm -hmm. that that dame who's a broad uh, and and sassy and uh, lived a bit. I, I, I'm really interested in those. Uh, but I don't know about new ones because uh, I'm a kind of, in my mind, I've always been that kind of, I've loved the Broadway genre of, you know, the, the guys and dolls in that. It's like I'm a Broadway energy. Um, and the play like the women or something, you know, you know, it's, it's that kind of era I, I'm interested in. And I think I've grown into my skin a bit now. Well, clearly my face. <laughs> 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 and I'm, I'm good with that. You know, they're great parts. Um, but again, forgive me, you know, for saying that Britain don't breed your kind of star people. We, we have them, but of course we're tiny island. You, you, you have millions of icons. And so they'll always get it before me, I guess. Uh, so I don't know, we'll just have to see. I'm, I'm, I'm not being modest, faux modest. I'm being realistic. You, you know, when I did Maine, they maybe thought about it going to London and then Broadway, mm -hmm. but then other star people got wind of it and they want to do it now. So it's like, okay, you just have to be fine about knowing that system. Um, and just getting on with it, with your, your own work ethic and your commitment along the way, I think. And again, you know, it's not that I'm cap in hand and grateful, 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 and I know my place in the world, which I do. But you've got to understand that, you know, if <laughs> who are you going to get, uh, Patty or me? Who are you going to get, Christine Chenoweth or me? I mean, it's obvious, you know. Well, I think you and Patty in a show together would be fabulous. So <laughs> we can hope Maybe for that. Maybe that will version. happen one day. <laughs> yes. Um, but in the meantime, it's fantastic work here in Hangman. Uh, and I appreciate you sitting down to, to talk with me. Oh, thank you. And, and thanks for liking the underdogs, because I probably am one. <laughs> <laughs> We're all about the underdogs here. So if you're watching at home, subscribe to Gold Derby. Make sure you keep in touch with us throughout this Broadway season. Tracy, thanks again. It was wonderful talking to you. Thanks, Sam. Thanks a lot.